Welcome to this tutorial on Biofilm Q. My name is Eric, and today we will learn how to separate two microcolonies in the same microscope image. Here I have an example of a single microscope image imported by Biofilm Q. You can see that in this image, two microcolonies are growing next to each other. We want to separate these two biofilms with the colony separation tool in Biofilm Q. You can find it in the image preparation tab on the right hand side of the image processing window in Biofilm Q. To start it, just press the button separate colonies. A new window appears where you can see a grayscale preview and a red selection mask. We can modify the selection mask by using the two sliders below the preview. Intensity a pixel has to express to be added to the current selection. If we move the slider to the left, more pixels will be added to the selection. If we move the slider to the right, only the brightest pixel remain. In this case, we want to select a threshold where both microcolonies are part of the selection. The lower slider adds an additional threshold for the colony size. At the moment it's set to zero. That means that all pixels, which are brighter than the intensity threshold, are part of the current selection mask. If we move the slider to the right, small selections will disappear. If we move the slider further right, also the big colonies will disappear. Let's set the slider to a reasonable value where the two big colonies remain. Once you found a good setting for the slider values, you can use the buttons below the sliders to manually modify the selection mask. In this case, we can see that the two microcolonies are connected by a small area in between. We want to remove this area by using the Remove Colony button. Once you press the button, a crosshair appears and you can select an area you want to re remove from the current selection. Double click to apply the settings. In this case, we also want to add this small cluster of cells to our selection. We use the Add Colony button to select the area and double click to apply the selection. By default, the colony separator will create new directories for each microcolony in the selection. You can modify this behavior by using the Keep Directory checkbox below the buttons. This is only recommended for single images or if you have multiple images of a single time point. A time-lapse analysis is not possible anymore when you have different positions from the same time point in the same folder. You can either create a new image for each microcolony in the selection or pick one colony and proceed. In this case, we want to clone the image for each colony. You can see that 
three new files appeared. The first file is the original file without any modified cropping settings. The first new file, which is named position 2, belongs to the first selected biofilm in the colony separator. Position 3 corresponds to the second biofilm in the colony separator. Position 4 was the manually selected cell cluster in the preview image. This is how the colony separation works for a single file. In most cases, you have multiple images from different time points. Let's have a look how this with the colony separator works. In this directory, I have the example data we already used in our other tutorials. You can see two microcolonies growing next to each other. To separate those two, we use the colony separator again. Just quickly modify the settings so that the two microcolonies are separated. To show you the feature apply to all images, I enable the checkbox. We now apply the cropping information for the current preview image to all files in the current directory. Once you press the button, you can see that the cropping information in the current directory has not changed. You can find the cloned images in a copied directory. In this case, the first directory contains the cropping information for the first microcolony. And the second directory contains the cropping information for the second microcolony. This was our short introduction to colony separation. For additional information on the other functions of Biofilm Q, please refer to the other tutorials.